Travel consideration provided by. How about new? No. Uh-uh, no way. Come on, no. 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 Only Discover has no annual fee on any card. Tomorrow on E.T., our Hollywood how-to rides the concrete with legend Tony Hawk. What could go wrong? Nothing. A lot. <laughs> then, actress Mia Long guest co-hosts. You don't want to miss it. Tomorrow on E.T. All right, in tonight's E.T. birthdays, which seventh heaven star began their career modeling at 12 years old? That would be Jessica Biel, who Hello. turns 38 today. Happy Happening now. Dozens of evacuees from JBSA Lackland being bused here to the airport. What other passengers have to say about it? It's Bernie Sanders versus Joe Biden. But what about Elizabeth Warren? How 14 states could decide what's next for the Democrats' presidential primary race. Early this morning, tornadoes tore across Tennessee. The rising death toll numbers and what authorities in Nashville are saying. And we have a few changes in the forecast for the potential of severe weather early tomorrow morning. I'll be back with all the details and help you prepare coming up in a few minutes. Some early voters are returning to the polls today. What they're asking election officials to do. The News at 5 starts right now. First at 5, more than 120 evacuees who have been quarantined at Joint Base San Antonio Lackland are now headed to their homes. This afternoon, dozens of the evacuees bust the San Antonio International Airport where they were taking flights to destinations all across the country. Many passengers leaving San Antonio today along with them told our Stephanie Cerna they aren't worried the evacuees might be on their flights. Are you happy to be heading home? Oh, of course. <laughs> the evacuees glad to be headed home after being quarantined for coronavirus at JBSA Lackland. These evacuees have been symptom free for at least 14 days and were bused to San Antonio International Airport and dropped off in the main passenger loading zone. A couple of passengers leaving San Antonio today expressed concern off camera, but most people we talked to say they were not worried to possibly be on the same flight as the evacuees. I only got so much time here anyway, and when it's up, it's up. <laughs> I have faith, I'm sorry. I, I don't, I, I'm not gonna be scared because someone got sick and I might get it. I mean, I'm taking the same precautions as I would with anything, with the flu or anything else. Maybe, maybe a little extra hand sanitizer, but that's it. I'm not too worried about it. I believe that uh, they followed the protocol to keep us safe to the best of their ability. So I'm, I'm going with that. Now, the mayor just wrapped up a news conference a little while ago, and we have learned that seven evacuees who have not tested positive for the virus are still under quarantine at JBSA Lackland. Now, it's not clear when they will be released. Now, 11 others who developed symptoms during the quarantine and tested positive for coronavirus, they remain in isolation at the Texas Center for Infectious Disease. We are live at the airport. Stephanie Serna, KSAT 12 News. Continuing our coverage of the coronavirus in San Antonio, North Star Mall back up and running today. Yeah, the mall temporarily closed yesterday afternoon after a woman who was being tested for the virus released from the Texas Center for Infectious Disease. She ended up visiting North Star Mall, eating at the food court, going to stores before results came back for the third test showing she was positive. That woman is now back in isolation at TCID. The mall was cleaned as a precaution, and again, it is now back open. We also learned today the Archdiocese of San Antonio taking its own measures to keep local parishes and school staff and students safe in regards to COVID-19. The changes include temporarily distributing Holy Communion in the hand rather than on the tongue, temporarily discontinuing the distribution of precious blood at Mass. They're also going to be removing holy water from the founts at the church doors and avoiding physical contact. Also, frequently sanitizing uh, classrooms and tables at Catholic schools. Now, the Archdiocese says these are only temporary changes and they will review them at a later date. And taking a look now at the impact the coronavirus has had across the country. Right now, there are more than 100 cases of COVID-19 spread across more than a dozen states. So far, nine people have died in Washington state. More than 90,000 cases have been confirmed around the world and more than 3,100 cases have resulted in death, most of them in mainland China. 
We're continuing to monitor the coronavirus and its impact here in San Antonio across the country around the world. You can stay up to date with new information on our website. We also have articles to help you better understand what the virus is, how close scientists are to developing a vaccine and how we got to where we are now. Just go to ksat.com and search coronavirus. In other news, new at five, we have learned the name of a Bear County inmate who died this morning when he hung himself inside his cell. He's now identified as 20 year old Joel Sombrano. Sombrano was in jail on a capital murder charge in connection with the 2018 murder of Roy Ponce, who was killed during a home invasion on Bassey Road. The sheriff's office says Sombrano was found hanging in his cell around six in the morning. A second deputy was called for backup, and despite life-saving measures, he died at the hospital. We now know the name of a motorcyclist killed in a crash on the east side last night. The Bear County Medical Examiner identifying him as 64-year-old Kyle Wayne Perry. And right now, police are still looking for the truck driver who killed him. They said the suspect ran off from the crash scene after he jackknifed his flatbed on I-10 East near Houston, excuse me, near Foster Road about 6:30 last night. Witnesses told police that the driver hit Perry's motorcycle from behind. Perry died at the scene. Three other vehicles were involved. When the suspect is found, he's expected to face multiple charges. We've also learned the name of a man who was shot and killed by an SAPD officer over the weekend. He's identified as 45 year old Richard Rodriguez. He was fatally shot at a home on Concio Drive on Sunday. Officers were called to the home over a report of a disturbance. When officers got inside, Rodriguez was standing in the hallway and allegedly pointing a gun at them. Neither of the officers were injured. One of them did fire a shot, and that is what killed Rodriguez. We're just a few hours away from learning which candidates lead the way in the primary election. Delegate Rich Texas among the nation's key races on this Super Tuesday. And this year had so many Democratic presidential contenders that Pete Buttigieg and Amy Klobuchar chose to bow out of the race just ahead of today's primary. About 75,000 voters have come out so far just today. And as Jesse Degoyata reports, some voters were even hoping for a second chance. This is the first for me, and I've been here a while. Having overseen many an election, Bear County Elections Administrator says she's heard about voters who actually told election judges. Change my vote. Cancel me for early voting and let me vote today. Those voters, she says, had apparently supported Democratic presidential candidates who dropped out of the race just before Super Rich. Tuesday. Rich. So they wanted what was essentially a do-over. Come on, we've heard everything. No, that can't be real. Once they cast their votes, she tells them, that's it. There's no way once, once that ballot is processed, it's processed. We cannot go back and pull it out. So many of you have been wondering, why is it that if a candidate has dropped out of the race, are they still on the ballot? Well, that's because Texas law requires that once a candidate has filed the paperwork, paid a, any fee if necessary, and has been verified by the Texas Secretary of State to appear on the ballot, they, their names cannot be removed just because they dropped out of the race. It's state law. We're live outside the Bear County Elections Office where voting continues. Jesse De Guillado, KSAT 12 News. No do-overs. Thank you, Jesse. We're going to take a live look now at the polling site over at Lions Field, the Adult and Senior Center on Broadway. You can see the line is actually out the door right now. Our Garrett Berger talking to voters there. We're going to check in with him coming up on the news at 6. But it is great to see all the people out there voting today. And the stakes are high this Super Tuesday. Nearly a third of all pledged delegates will be awarded in today's contest. And depending on the outcome, the battle for the Democratic nomination could narrow quite a bit tonight. Nadia Romero joins us now live in Washington with the latest on that. Nadia. Well, Ursula and Steve, so much has happened since the last contest of South Carolina's primary just three days ago on Saturday. Three candidates have dropped out, so let's take a look. These are the five candidates who are still in the race, who will be on those Super Tuesday ballots. And as you mentioned, a third of those delegates are still up for grabs, and that's largely because of California adding themselves to Super Tuesday. They used to be further along in the primary season. Now they're on Super Tuesday, 415 pledged delegates. And then, of course, your state, Texas, 228. So between the two of the largest state, some 600 delegates up for grabs. 
Super Tuesday has finally arrived, and it's already living up to its billing. Face up, face down. As voters in 14 states and one territory head to the polls, a line in the sand has been drawn within the Democratic Party. Let's bring everybody, come on up here, guys. A flurry of last-minute endorsements for Joe Biden, including three former Democratic rivals. I'm delighted to be casting my ballot for Joe Biden. Has this primary shaping up to be a two-man race? It looks like St. Paul is ready for a political revolution. Bernie Sanders says he's not surprised that Biden is consolidating support from what he calls the establishment. But he thinks there's plenty of room in his tent as well. To all of Amy and Pete's millions of supporters, the door is open. Come on in. But Michael Bloomberg and Elizabeth Warren are still fighting for votes. Both it. claim they still have a path to victory. I got in because I thought that uh, I could uh, beat Donald Trump and I thought I could do the job of being president. I'm here today because I believe in you. I believe in the America we can build together. With more than 1,300 pledge delegates at stake and only 154 awarded so far, Super Tuesday could lay the groundwork for a prolonged primary battle that may not be settled anytime soon. And you're taking a live look at a polling location in Missouri City, Texas. That's in the Houston area. You can see people lined up uh, wanting to be a part of this democratic process. So there they are. And now let's talk about Nashville. Here's a mega site, a polling location in Nashville, Tennessee. Remember, they had a round of storms overnight that killed 22 people. So those polling locations in that area, that those uh, sites that were affected, those folks are told come to one of these mega sites. And now they have extended polling in Nashville for two hours because of the storm. Live in Washington, D.C., I'm Nadia Romero. Steve and Ursula, back to you. Thank you, Nadia Romero. We appreciate it. Yeah, reporting live in D.C. Thank you, Nadia. A lot to watch tonight. We're going to be monitoring the election throughout the rest of the day. Tonight at 7, I'm going to have the first live results for you during an election night spreester sessions. It's live streaming. It starts at 7 o'clock tonight. You can watch it on KSAT.com or on the KSAT TV app, which can be downloaded on your streaming device. And, of course, we will have all the election results tonight in an hour-long night beat at 10. With the primary election underway, the countdown to the general election begins. And we want to help keep you informed with local and national politics. Head over to KSET.com and subscribe. We have a Vote 2020 newsletter and a new one sent out every Tuesday. Now the clouds are held tight today. Temperature in mid 70s here in San Antonio. You can see that low cloud deck that's still in place. Let's take a look at our readings across our area. According to our weather watchers in the backyard, 75 Del Rio, 70 Leon Springs and Lakey, Panama Maria and Floresville, 78 degrees. There were some peaks of sun southeast of town where it's a little bit warmer, but you know Gary's backyard in West Kerrville. Only 68 and 71 in Canyon Lake. All right, so uneventful the rest of this evening. It's later tonight where we have the storm threat, especially between about 2 a.m. and 7 a.m. Straight line winds, the primary threat, along with hail as well. Those are both, both moderate uh, risks as we go through the night. Flooding and tornadoes on the lower end. We're going to talk more about this and time it out for you more coming right up. Thank you, Adam. Still ahead on the news at 5. We we'll go back to that chaos in Nashville, two deadly tornadoes tearing through the state the night before the big primary, how the Nashville community is coping and recovering. We have more still to come. And the Federal Reserve announcing a big interest rate cut, what the coronavirus has to do with it. Next. The coronavirus concerns reaching all the way to Wall Street. The Federal Reserve cutting interest rates today over fears that COVID-19 will have a negative impact on the United States economy. The new benchmark interest rate is at 1% to 1.25%. It is the first emergency rate cut since the 2008 financial crisis. The Federal Reserve hopes it will calm investors' concerns, but after the announcement, Stocks fluctuated wildly today. Taking a look at the market right now, this is what it closed at. Actually down 785.91 points, the Dow Jones. And you can see the NASDAQ and the S&P also down. Not enough to recover from last week's major plummet. In other news, death and devastation across Nashville today after at least two confirmed tornadoes touched down early this morning. Reports from the Tennessee Emergency Management System now say at least 22 people were killed by that storm. 
ABC's Victor Akindo has the latest. The deadly path of a violent tornado. At least two confirmed tornadoes touched down in Nashville, wreaking havoc as they tore across the city. Daylight bringing with it the full scope of the devastation in central Tennessee. So I looked up and noticed like the funnel cloud. You saw the funnel cloud? Yeah, I seen it. The number of dead, around two dozen, with many more still missing. Emergency crews working to clear debris-filled streets after at least 45 buildings collapsed in Music City. Our heart breaks for those who are whose lives were changed in an instant last night. Homes eviscerated on one side of the street, but still standing on the other. I mean, we've, we've been through lots of tornado warnings and um, never thought that this would happen. It, it's just shock. It's like a war zone. Thousands more without power as their power lines dangled dangerously in the streets. This elementary school destroyed while at the nearby airport planes tossed by the violent storm into a pile, the hangar heavily damaged. Polling stations throughout the county closed. Voters in this Super Tuesday state rerouted. But even amid the rubble. There's a lot of hope and rebuilding that needs to happen here. And, and already we see members of the community coming out saying what can they do to help. Um, that's, that's hope. Victor Okendo, ABC News, Nashville. We have been keeping an eye up there, and hopefully nothing like that will occur overnight here. Uh, no, we're not expecting anything near what uh, Nashville had last night. So we want to throw that out there right now. Our tornado risk is really on the low end with this situation. Straight line winds and large hail pose our primary threats later tonight and through tomorrow morning. But hopefully some good rain. Yes, yeah, some parts I think will get some good rain, okay. and I'll show you the map to detail who's going to get the best rain from this system. All right, so let's start first with a little timeline here of our rain chances and storm chances. Notice how by midnight, just a 30% chance, but then that jumps to 60% from 2 a.m. to 7 a.m. So basically, from about 2 a.m. to 8 a.m. is our primary time frame here in San Antonio for the thunderstorms, some of which could be severe. Then we get into the rest of the day tomorrow, and there could be some lingering spritzes and sprint spritzes and sprinkles here and there some light showers. All right, so here's the primary risk area for you that where you see the yellow color here, Northwest Bear County, and I wouldn't count out the rest of the county either, but uh, Storm Prediction Center has it Northwest Bear County and on into the hill country and even locations west of town. So the yellow area is our primary uh, concern for severe thunderstorms and that stretches all the way up to just south of Dallas. So here's the situation right now. We've had the low clouds throughout the day today. Not much in terms of rainfall from them. A little sprinkle here and there, and that was it. The main action is still off to our west with the big upper level circulation that's the driving force for this. Now that's going to throw some energy out ahead of it into South Texas later on tonight. And I do think we could have a few little discrete cells pop up after midnight, probably 1, 2 a.m. We could see a few of these little uh, thunderstorms pop up out ahead of the main system. Again, 1 a.m. to 2 a.m. They could even be strong to severe. Then we progress through the rest of the night and into early morning hours. A line of storms develops out west 3 a.m., affecting our western areas closer to the border. That progresses eastward, but we're expecting it to break up a bit as it approaches San Antonio. But still around the morning commute tomorrow, we're expecting some scattered storm activity in and around Bear County, and then it tapers off as it moves east of town. So here's a look at the rainfall potential, and the real sweet spot is hill country, northward Edwards Plateau. We're talking two inches or more right of good soaking rainfall. You get locally here and we should be right on the cutoff of about a half an inch. Maybe if we're lucky in Northern Bear County, lesser amounts as you get into the coastal plain and anywhere southeast of town. But these blues indicate an inch or more of rain. So this should be a good soaker for some folks, especially in the hill country. All right, so here's a look at the timeline of our storm chances here. Notice that 4 a.m. 60%, 7 a.m. It's still way up there, and then by 9 a.m. the storms will be coming to an end. Here's another key factor into tomorrow. It's not a one size fits all in terms of temperatures. I mean, we'll be near 80 south of San Antonio, but in the clouds with some lingering showers, the hill country and north of Highway 90, we're looking at low clouds and some spotty showers the rest of the day and temperatures only making it into the 60s 
tomorrow afternoon. So a big difference north to south. That's something to keep in mind here. Now, once we get through this activity, the rest of the week is looking a OK. Actually very seasonable. A lot of sunshine mornings in the 40s and afternoons right around 70 degrees, and that's going to last into the first part of the weekend. So just to reiterate, straight line winds the primary threat later tonight and maybe even some large hail. Those are the main risk factors and time frame for San Antonio. We could really see some of those cells pop up anywhere from about 1 a.m. to 8 a.m. Might hear them, right? That's right. All right. Thank you, Adam. All right. Spurs down some players. Now they're down a pop. That's right. Down at head coach. He will not be able to be uh, in the arena tonight in Charlotte. Instead, it will be Tim Duncan taking over as interim head coach. The first time in his career from the start of a game. When we come back, more about that. And the Rockets practice for State interrupted today. <laughs> Coming up. For the first time, Tim Duncan will be the head coach of the Spurs from the start of tonight's game against the Hornets in Charlotte. That was announced by the Spurs late this afternoon, saying Pop could not coach due to personal business. This is not the first time Tim has been tagged as the acting head coach. He took over for Pop back on November the 16th, when Pop was ejected from the Spurs game against the Blazers. All that plus the Spurs are down LaMarcus and Jakob, and Marco Bellinelli now is out with an illness. Our San Antonio Spurs lost two out of their three in the first homestand since a disastrous rodeo road trip, are now back in 12th place in the Western Conference, four games back of Memphis. Grizzlies were in the last eighth playoff spot with 23 games left in the regular season. That's after the loss of the Indiana Pacers at home after getting out to a 10 0 lead in the first quarter. DeJounte Murray caps off the run with a great start, but the Pacers pounce back. TJ Warren with a steal and slam on the other end. Patty Mills, by the way, answers with a rare four point play. The three plus the foul. And the Spurs are up 34 26 after one. With Yaka Perto sideline for two weeks, Drew Eubanks gets his first NBA start, delivers a layup off the alley oop. The Spurs are then outscored 40 23 in the second quarter. Malcolm Brogdon with the three. And the Spurs are down 66-57 at the half. The Spurs will get down by as many as 15 when they come back. Alani Walker the fourth with a flying dunk. Then on the very next play, Patty Mills with a three to give the Spurs the lead. He would finish with 24. But the Pacers wrap it up. Brogdon with a shot from the elbow to finish with 26. And the Spurs fall 116 to 111. We lost, man. It's, it sucks when you compete. You don't, you know, you don't compete. You feel like you won the game. You compete. I mean. We lost. That's all I could really say, honestly. It's frustrating to have any type of game, any type of few minutes where you make mistakes. Um, but, you know, that's the way the game. The game's all about runs. You know, they're, they're going to have their runs. You know, they're not going to go 0% from the field. So um, it's all about when you get knocked down, how you're going to get back up. About a half hour from tip-off now in Charlotte at 6 p.m. Good luck to the Judson Rockets who are headed to the State High School basketball tournament again this year in the Alamo Dome to defend their first ever 6A state title in girls basketball. That's after they were able to knock off Westlake to win the Region 4 championship. This morning, the Rockets hit the practice court to get ready for their game against Duncanville. And here's something you don't see every day. Their practice interrupted by a fire alarm that forces the team to evacuate as fire crews investigate. But the Rockets are still focused on the prize. It's very exciting. Uh, not too many teams get to do this, and we're, you know, we're grateful to have this chance again. So we're going to go for it a second time. All right, the Rockets will face their first test of the state tournament in the Alamo Dome this Friday night at 8.30, and we will be there for that. More coming up at 6. Maybe it was their hot shooting. That was Set off it. the fire alarm. <laughs> Maybe that was Singed it. Singed nets. Yeah. yeah. Gotcha. We'll be right back. All right, here's a look at the timeline for uh, greatest storm chances, and it's really between about 1 a.m. and 8 a.m. That's when we could have at any point in that time frame some passing severe thunderstorms. Tomorrow, big differences north to south temperature-wise. All right, thank you, Adam, and thank you for watching the News at 5 with us. World News up next. See you back here at 6.